Hello.
So is it going to be just as good? Looks like it's going to be just as. Yes, I should begin. Hi everyone. So I'm seeing four people on Zoom and one person here in the classroom. But uh, it's time, so I think we should begin. So what we are going to do today is we are going to um, create a tic-tac-toe program. And I'm sure all of you know what tic-tac-toe is. It's sometimes called knots and crosses or X's and O's. And um, I actually do have a do have it working already. So let me first show you what it looks like. Um, so this is the version that I have written already, and I have shared this with you on GitHub. So oh. Um, So if you can't see this on Zoom, now it should be able to. So yeah. So yeah, I think this is working. Hi, yes, sir. So what I will do is I will uh, go back and create a new stack project to start this from scratch. I will call this project tic to 2 So what it's going to do is over here, it's going to set up a new folder called tic tac 2 And yeah, we are going to go into that folder and start working. So um, you have already used a lot of stack in your homework and we previously in the class before. Maybe one thing I haven't noticed is that there is this package.yaml file over here. We can uh, add more dependencies to it. Like right now, this is base. So this is the set of libraries that's already included with uh, um, every stack project. But later as we go, we will uh, add more uh, more things to this. Hi, Karthi. More things to this. Uh, list of dependencies. So uh, let's start by designing the game board. So I will create a file called board.hs over here. And I will write a So here I will say module board where and I'm going to start defining the key data types we need in order to represent the tic-tac-toe board. And so I, I, I hope everyone can see the screen, right? People on the back. So yeah, I'm first going to start by defining this defining this type called player and player is either going to be X or O and I'm going to throw in a deriving show because it would be nice to be able to print this. So the next thing I want to do is I want to have a board, which would be a three cross three, three grid. And I want us to notice that there are lots of options in here. So we could do three, we could do nested lists, like a nested list with three lists inside each of which are of size three. We could do a flat list of size nine. Uh, we could do some kind of array. Um, we could do a function from some kind of finite type, like could, we could have a 
some kind of coordinate system and say that it's like either the first box and then the third box or something and like up till nine and then we would say that our board is of board is something like this so um i'm going to use a different choice over here instead i'm going to use this thing called map so map is a kind of data structure that uh it's, it's a very popular haskell library it's called data.map so it's implemented as a binary search tree basically and you should think of it as a key value uh key value map so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my package.yml file and i'm going to uh, add containers and i'm going to add uh, two lines to my file to import this map package or this map library so if i try to reload it right now it doesn't see it because i need to do build first I, this might take some time hopefully not too long so i'm doing stack build this should uh, Yeah, I can't tell from the trace what is the difference, but now we should be able to have this uh, map over here. So uh, you can ignore this for a moment. So from data.map, the thing that I'm importing is map. So this is the map type. And so I, I could refer to the functions inside the map uh, as map.null map.size so that's why i'm calling it qualified so if i do map.null map it will know that i'm talking about this one and uh, i am unqualifiedly importing a specific just the type so that i when i want to use the map i don't have to say map.map .map. Um, but that's just a matter of convenience so i'm going to define the board as follows so far this is just a constructor the main thing is going to be this uh, it's going to be a map from a pair of ints to maybe player so this pair of ints are going to be from 0 to 2 but uh, this type doesn't enforce that I, I will talk about that in a moment and if this maybe player is nothing then that cell in the board is empty otherwise it's either just X or just O. So some player has marked that uh, square. So, yeah, I'm not going to derive anything for now. That will come later. When we will do that when we need that. Um, so notice that uh, just this does not guarantee that uh, this ints are going to be between zero to two. And maybe there was a better way to represent this but um this is a good pedagogical choice because it uh, allows me to introduce you to this map functionality so what i'm going to do is i'm going to you uh, set up some accessor functions like some getters and setters through which you can use this uh, board so that you don't need to use the map interface in order to uh, access this board because if you did use the map interface you might accidentally use um some other val values than zero or two which may not represent the correct board so what i will do is whenever uh, someone uses this i will i will be uh, making sure that they go through this get mark and put mark and these things rather than something else so i'm going to define a function get mark which will given a so given a particular board it will for now let's let's leave it as undefined and i will also define a function called put mark so here i'm saying maybe board because if it is the case that um that particular square has already been filled i just want to say nothing so yeah let us fill in these definitions so if it is 
so first i will take in this board so i'm saying board board so um the idea is that this let's call it board b because this there is this constructor and this is behind this constructor so i'm pattern matching this particular pattern to say that the name of this map is b right and uh, let's say my coordinates that we have gotten are x y so the first case is uh, this i'm just uh, copying code from a because uh, i have written this so just to save some time so if this is less than zero or greater than two or uh, something like that then these are going to be invalid coordinates we're going to throw an error otherwise otherwise we are going to use uh, uh, we are going to like look up in this map so if you notice in the map um in the map uh uh, library there is this operator uh, this thing which allows us to look up a particular value in the map notice that it wants the keys to be ordered because uh, the way that it stores this in the search tree is i mean it's a search tree so uh, it has to store it by some kind of order so we are going to use that and we have already imported this so we don't need to write map dot this but uh, we could have so i'm going to say b x y um, that works. That's good. So, in this case, again, I'm going to copy this line. Oh, oh, um, oh, yeah. I I need to better match the player because there there's an another argument here. So now, I if it is not an invalid coordinate, I want to go into the board. Uh, maybe I should call it B. I want to go into this B and check x comma y. So now, if it is just x or just o, then that position has already been filled. So I could write it like this. So if it is just something, then this has already been filled. I'm going to say nothing. And if it is not filled, then I want to fill it with the particular, uh, particular uh, player that is trying to put the mark here. So if I go to map again, I will see that there is a function called insert that modifies the map given a key and the value pair, it basically inserts that. So I'm going to say map dot insert. Uh, so over here, there is, I have imported this qualified map. So if I do map dot insert, it knows that we are talking about this insert. And So notice that like the elements, the values in here are maybe players. So I will wrap this player in just and in the in this board, which is B. And uh, this entire thing is wrapped in the board constructor. So I will add that. And this thing is wrapped in the just constructor because there is a so yeah, lots of wrappers here. So can I? Yeah, I, I can do this. So Okay, so I will now add uh, a few extra things which will be very useful. So one of the things is going to be the empty board. Basically, I'm gonna call it the init board. So it's going to be some board con the board constructor and then a map. And in this map, I basically want uh, everything to be filled with nothing because all the cells are empty. And this is a list, but there is a function called, uh, there is a function called from list, which converts a list of pairs to a map. 
So we will just say map dot. And uh, this is a list comprehension, right? So that's good. And so any questions about this so far? I realize I'm not, uh, I'm a bit rushing today, but um, pause me if you want to ask any questions. So, so far we are just setting up some simple things because we want to be able to use these. And another thing is, uh, Many a times I would like to know what are the empty squares in a particular board. And given a board, that's just a list of coordinates. So I'm going to say empty board. This is going to be uh, x, y from this range such that. Um, I, 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 this is called a pattern card. I don't know if we have seen this before, but we could have uh, written this using a case expression. I think. So B, I, I don't know if this will work, this particular syntax. Is it because it's looking for my parents? So yeah, I'm not sure this works. So there is a function in this uh, thing called data dot maybe called uh, is nothing. So I can use this to test whether something is nothing without uh, using pattern matching basically. Uh, there is a way to use pattern matching inside like this kind of context, but this is probably not the correct syntax. So, right. so I will use this thing. Uh, yeah, so that's in data dot maybe. So just to do a simple test, I can do empty squares and then I can ask empty squares in the initial board and that should be everything that right? which it is. So yes. And I would also be also like to be able to print the empty board, uh, print the print these boards in a prettier fashion. So I'm not doing I have not done deriving show over here in the definition of board, because I will uh, add a definition of show myself. So I will just copy this. So um, this is probably a bit jarring. What it does is there is this function called intercalate, which basically puts this bars between each of these things in this is in data dot list. Maybe I should import that. Uh, so 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 I have intercalate, which has this type. So I can do, if I had like several numbers and let's say I wanted to put a vertical bar between them, I could do this. And let's say my numbers are, or let's say my strings are something like, so it kind of looks like that. That's what this, this line is doing for so, so X is the, um, X is the row and Y is the column. So first we are fixing an X and then for that X, we are choosing every Y. So it's a row like that. And for that row, I'm, uh, I'm looking at this particular thing and it's, I, we get like X's O's or blanks. And then we intercalate them to get a string like this with this vertical bar. And then for each row, we get these things and we intercalate them with this particular thing. And so this, uh, if you don't know this, like this is like a new line. So I print row one and then I 
uh, put this blank, uh, this bar, 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 and then I print row two, and then I do that for row three. Uh, so now, now that I have a show instance for this, if I say init bold, it should print it like that. So let's see if this put mark thing is working, for example. So put mark, what was the type of put, put mark in it board? And let's say I want to put X in the position zero comma zero. So it looks like that. So it there is this just X, but this just is because of, um, because this board is like put mark produces a maybe board. It doesn't produce a, just a board. So yeah. Actually, in uh, data dot maybe there is this function called from just which unwraps the just wrapper. It's like kind of unsafe because if you pass it nothing, it will throw an error, which is not good. But here we are kind of sure that uh, we have a just over here, so we can use that just to show the pretty print printing nicely. Yeah. Yes. Just explain very much single casting. Yes. Yes. So from just has this type, uh, maybe a ROA, but uh, it doesn't always work because it might be nothing and it might just fail. So in the Haskell world, we call that a, in the Haskell world, we call that a partial function because it's like not defined on some values. So, um, so at this point, uh, I think we should add some tests. And I will not go over the tests very much, but I will just import them. Uh, I will just copy and paste them. So I'm going to go over, go to this test slash spec. And um, okay, I'm going to copy a whole bunch of stuff. So if you're doing the homework, you have seen this thing already. And I think for this, I need, a, uh, I need, uh, to add H spec. So I will open a different terminal and I will do stack build. Just to add in the, okay. so that is compiling for now. Uh, it, it is working. So I have a bunch of tests over here. Uh, to check that these uh, these board functions are working correctly, so I will copy them over because writing them step by step will take a lot of time. So let's see, I, what do I need to import? So I will import board. Um, So I'm checking that in the beginning, this, uh, this is empty because this cell is empty in the init board because this is an empty cell, which is good. Uh, this is also empty, which is why like we are being told by get mark that there is nothing here. But if we try to evaluate this on these positions, which are, uh, which are like not legal positions, we should get some kind of error. Namely, we are getting this error invalid coordinates. So I'm checking that. And I'm checking that uh, in the initial board, zero comma zero. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we are checking some things for put mark. So if I have the initial empty board and then I put X at zero comma zero, that should work. If I have, so I will add a couple of boards called um, all X and all O. So this is for testing purpose, kind of, but it's also useful for later. So these are boards in which uh, all the squares are filled with X's and O's. So this is useful for our testing. So if I have that board and I try to put X in that board at zero comma zero coordinate, we should get nothing because uh, that cell is already occupied. So let's actually try to do stack test. Oh. 
it will tell you which uh, what. Oh, so here I'm trying to check whether this thing is. Mm, it's trying it, it tries to compare uh, these two players and it's here the answer that you get is nothing or it could be like just x or something but it's trying to compare those two things but in order to be able to compare two things we need to have a uh, q over here because otherwise you can't know whether they are equal so i will add that and i think we will also need a deriving eq over here because I, if i'm trying to test this uh put mark and i get a board if i want to check that that is correct i need to be able to compare two boards so there is that uh did i miss something oh the other thing is i forgot to uh, this still says it's not yet implemented so I will uh... okay. So uh, yeah, get mark and put mark are working, and we have some tests. So that is good. So now that we have uh, some management for the board. The next thing we are going to do is we are we are going to uh, define the victory conditions. Like, if I have a board, I want to be able to figure out whether X has one or O has one or something like that. So, I'm going to call this position dot HS, and I'm going to start defining those things here. So. I will eventually need to import a whole bunch of things, but for now I need to import this board because I'm, I'm going to need to use those things all the time. So the first thing I'm going to define is a type called line and it's not really necessary to define the synonym, but line is a list of coordinates. So I will have a line like this horizontal line, this vertical line, things like that. So actually, I'm going to do that right away. I'm going to define winning lines. And this is a list of lines. And let me copy that as well. So yeah. So I have a bunch of lines over here. The first one is I fix a Y coordinate and I change the X. So these are vertical lines, then they're horizontal lines. Then there is the main diagonal and the off diagonal. So that's good. Now I'm going to define line winner. So this is a function that takes a board and a line and it checks if there is any winner along that line. So call the board B, call the line L. And um, so there is a handy function in the in the prelude which is called all. And you can ignore this foldable D. You can think of foldable D as a list of T. But what it does is basically it takes the predicate and a list and it checks whether everything in the list satisfies that predicate. So you could have written this with fold, like fold R or something like that. But uh, fortunately, to make your life easier, uh, the prelude gives this to you. So for example, I can try to see if all these numbers are less than seven. And yes, it is. Are all these numbers less than seven? No, because this contains eight. So, yeah, we will be using this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that 
I'm going to define I'm going to define this thing called marks, which are all the marks along that particular line. And what do I need to do in order to get that? So I need to do so. This is a list of coordinates. And for each coordinate, I want to get that mark. So I get mark B for this point, and I do get mark B for this point, and I do get mark B for this point. And that's a list. So that is all the list of marks along that line. And now I want to check whether all of those are equal to something. Uh, actually, maybe there's a better way to write this. I'm not completely sure. So if all of these are equal to X, equal to just X, then I produce just X. Otherwise, it's something like maybe some cells are empty or maybe it's a mix of X's and O's, something like that. So I will just say otherwise. Yeah. Any questions about this? Yeah. Yeah, we can use. We can use if and else. Um, it's not usually done, but we can do it. But we will need like uh, two if and else, right? I think so. I, I don't know of uh, any particular. And that probably works if not for this. Yeah, it does work. Um, we can keep it like that. I kind of prefer the guard syntax. <laughs> so, so, okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define board winner, and this is going to be board arrow maybe player. So, actually, I should carefully write the contract of this function because. Here I'm going to assume that the board has no multiple winners or something like that. Basically, what I'm going to do is I have this list of winning lines. I'm going to scan over them and I'm going to check the first one which has a winner on that line. So in a normal game, you would not really have two winners. So I'm just going to sweep that under the rug. So before I define that, uh, there is a useful function called which looks like this I, I guess it's pronounced alternative or something like that so what it does so it it it's look it looks like that it has some type like that actually it's a little more general than that but uh, for our understanding this way it'll do so what it does is basically it picks the first the first thing which is not nothing so if it is nothing are nothing and x then it picks the second thing if it is x or nothing then it picks x so if you have nothing or nothing then it uh, and if you have like just x or just y then it picks just x so basically what it does is it uh, produces the first thing, which is a just instead of another thing. So, um, basically the idea of this function is going to be something like this. Uh, so let's say that I have B over here and something. So let's say that the list of, uh, list of line winners are L1, L2, L3. These are all the lines that I want to check. So I will basically check uh, line winner B L1, which is which checks if there is a line along the, uh, there is a winner along this first line. And if that is uh, just something, I will just take that. Or if it is not something, then I will go to the next one. 
so basically i want to define this thing like that this sorry or where l1 l2 l3 are coming from winning lines makes sense so this is a function that takes two things but we can sort of think of it as a function that takes a lot of things by just doing a fold over this thing right so we will do fold r and then uh, we will produce something like that so yeah i have this board and uh, so whenever i do fold r i keep forgetting what is its type and i check so yeah i have a thing over here like the folding function so i will keep that blank for now and the initial thing so the initial thing might as well be nothing and and i have this list of things over here so let's call this list of things winning lines and let's see so for each winning line i uh i want to produce something like this so if i have l1 so if i have l1 l2 l3 i want to get something like this in the other line and how do i do that i do map right then i will get a list of things that look like that make sense so basically uh, if i do that if i do the map then it will look like a list of things that look like that we all agree right and after that i basically just need to do this to take the first one which is uh, which is just something rather than nothing or if there is none of them then we go to the ultimate like the last thing and we just get nothing so so this thing is there in control dot applicative so yeah we will start importing a whole bunch of things very soon so this definition makes sense to everyone right Uh, okay so i'm going to uh, test this very soon with a lot of uh, different boards and things like that so i'm going to define another function called is draw and given a board i'm going to check whether it has so this definition is not really good because we usually call a tic tac toe thing draw if it is going to be draw but uh, here i am going to use a slightly worse definition uh, so i am going to call this draw if there are no empty squares and nobody has won so now i am going to before i move on to the next thing i will add a whole bunch of tests Yeah. So I'm going to add a whole bunch of tests again, and so uh, let's look at these. So I'm saying that uh, for line winner, I'm checking like I'm checking for the first tele first winning line that there is no with like no winner in the initial board. 
along along this line and in the board that is filled with all x's i'm checking that along some particular line if i check the winner i should get x similarly uh, for the initial board I, if i do the board winner thing which checks if there is some winner along any line should get no winner but if the board is filled with x's then uh, if the board is filled with x's then the answer should be just x so i will add a couple of boards over here see this will allow us to uh, test this more thoroughly so i'm going to uh, import this x board one and o board one now so so over here i'm using uh do notation not because we are inside io but we can use do notation because we are inside uh, we are inside maybe so what is happening over here is that if you remember the type of put mark put mark produces a maybe board so what i do is i start with the init board and at 0 comma 0 uh at 0 comma 0 i put uh p1 uh, I, I put put o and i call that b1 and at b1 at 0 comma so that is a maybe board but i can chain these things together like we talked about in the last class using do notation or or this chain this chain maybe thingy so we are basically putting an o over here and x over here and o over here and x over like some things like that and actually maybe what i should do is i should uh, so if you this is a handy thing to know if you need to open your uh, ghci in the test environment you can type this thing and it should uh, drop you into this okay let's see if that works okay we have a lot of issues so okay i many of them are because i did not import position where this board winner and these things are defined let's see why is that maybe because i just saved this and Mm, not sure let me run a stack build it, it's not able to see the steam position library for some reason oh. so i'm getting another error inside position which is that it doesn't see this is, is nothing so that is inside data dot okay uh, maybe it couldn't see position because it was uh, not compiling So yeah, um, this is a this is what I'm calling export one. Like uh, looking at the code itself doesn't help you so much. But so if you uh, try to do board winner on this, it should uh, it should tell us that the winner is just X because along this line there is a winner. Um, there is export two. In this, there is no winner, but uh, we are going to get a winner in one step, but we, we don't have the code for uh, figuring out how to get the winner in one step, at least not yet. So yeah, and then there is O board one, which looks like that. And here O has one. So yeah, that looks good. Let me run stack test, so every test should pass. okay that's good so now what we are going to do is ultimately uh, we want the computer to be able to play with us so we want to uh, add 
certain uh, ways in order to uh, pick what is the next strategy and also uh, to figure out whether uh, if you are in a particular position in the game whether that's a winning position or a losing position so right now we just know whether someone has won but we also want to know whether we can we have a winning strategy or not so um the first thing i'm going to do over here is or actually this is the reason i named this file position uh, maybe i should have started with that so i'm going to define this type called position which packages together the current board and the current player so to know whether a position is winning or losing we need to not just know the board but we also need to know who is playing so i will uh, package those things together and call it position mm. we are going to use deriving q um actually we need, we will need to derive a whole bunch of things but let's keep it blank for now we can we will add them as we need them because um, yeah that that's better way to do it i guess so so i i guess at this point i should uh, explain the idea of the game tree maybe i can just uh, this is conversion so there is this idea of the game tree and what do i mean by that so basically at the bottom of the game tree there are certain positions from which you cannot do anything so let's say like some of these positions o has one some of this position x has one and some of these positions are draws so my ascii art is not great so but uh, these are i'm going to call these things terminal positions but uh, not all positions are going to be terminal for in th in the sense that from some positions i'm going to be able to make more moves so maybe there is some position over here from which if i take a step i can either uh go to this position in the game tree or this position in the game tree uh and this is a tree because ultimately like i have this empty board and or rather some kind of position and from each of those i can i can choose any of these things and then i can choose more of these things so it's a tree does this concept make sense to everyone or uh, or should i uh, use a whiteboard to explain this yes yeah i think watch yeah watch yeah the Yeah. Uh, so, does this make sense? Because if you have, we will get to that. Um, Yeah, maybe actually I should explain this on the whiteboard huh? because it's not good if it doesn't make sense. So.
and for some reason i can't connect my ipad so i will just use the zoom whiteboard which is worse but it will have to do for now so the idea is that at the bottom of the game tree there are certain games which are completed and if a game is completed we know whether it is uh, who has won that game tree like maybe o has won that game tree or x has or maybe it's a maybe it's a draw so now the point is that what is what are the edges in this tree so in each of these trees you can uh, take a step by by going for a move so let's say that i have this thing over here where i have this thing and let's say right now the uh, right now the current player is going to be x so from here in this tree i can move to another board like that in which let's say x is over here and actually there are uh, this particular node in this tree has eight different successors so the idea is as we get closer to the bottom of the tree we will get to know who has uh, won that particular uh, particular node in the tree and uh, i want the nodes of this tree to be positions not just boards the difference is that a position is a board plus a player so if i know both the board and the player i know whether this is a winning position or a losing position or a draw so um so far so good okay so the main idea here is that if i have a winning uh, position i could define a winning position as follows so a, a winning position is a position in which so it could be a terminal position if if my uh, if i look at the current board and i notice that the current player has won then that is definitely a winning position so that is one possibility so let's say that current board is like uh, this and maybe i see a line like that and then current player is o then i know that o has won so this is a possibility the other possibility is that um, i am not in a terminal node but i can i have a strategy that is a losing that will force the other player to lose so in that case if i do have a uh, uh, let's say that i have i am at some position like this and i am the current player o so at this position this is not a winning position but from this position there is a successor which is this in which uh, o has o has this winning line but the current player is x so this is a losing position because the current player is x but the other guy has won so a winning position is either a terminal position in which i have won or it is a uh, position from which the success all the from which there is at least one successor which is losing for the opponent right so uh, let's write some code Qu any questions sorry yeah i would say yes uh yeah the player who is about to go so in this case if it is x is about to go it x can't really go because x has already lost so 
I'm going to call this a terminal position, which is losing for X. Uh, just a second. Let me just um, get my things. So when James working, it's playing perfectly. Yeah. Uh, so actually, this strategy that we just discussed it works for any game, like any game for which you can make a game three, like for chess, for example. But why can't we like use that to derive a perfect strategy for chess? Because the game tree is just very huge, right? You you so can't. Uh, so, but, but that time it's so huge. So here the yeah. So what is actually done in chess engines, I believe, is that uh, you do some of this, but uh, you can't get to the bottom of the tree. So you try to evaluate the positions with some heuristics. So you try to that's, that's yeah, like you try to Yeah, a human player can like look at at most two or three, maybe. I guess. So, yeah. Um, so let's try to put that into code. So uh, this thing is, is this necessary? Yeah. So I have a position which is a current, has a current board and a player, but I can also pattern match with it. And I do that sometimes. And I have written a pause at over here, which basically says this entire thing that you are capturing, call that, give that the name pause as well. So I, if I want to like reuse this particular thing, which I have read as input, I don't have to write position B, B again. I can just use pause. So this thing is called an as pattern. So if I want to know if a particular uh, position is winning and to know if it's winning, the base case is whether it's a terminal node, which is winning. So if I, I, I can check for uh, who is the winner in this board? And if I get some answer, and if the this is the current player who is like about to move, if the if that is the person who is uh, who has won already, then um, then we are good. So I want to check this that the person current player is the person who has won. If nobody has won. Then um, I want to check that there are no empty squares in which case, in which case it's not a winning position. It's, uh, and we already know that it, nobody has won because we have pattern matched against that case. So I want to check that, uh, there are, are some empty squares. So, um, if you didn't know the null thing is basically, a uh, basically it checks whether a list is empty, like it's a shorthand. So I, this is one, I want to make sure that is the case. And, uh, 
I want to make sure that there is at least one, at least one successor in the game tree, which is a losing position for, uh, which is a losing position. So I'm just calling it a position because in the next position, the other player will be in charge. So um, what is this any? So it's basically the dual of all. So all has this type, actually any has the same type. The difference is that all checks whether all of those things satisfy the predicate. So uh, this is false according to all because there is eight, but any is gonna check whether there is at least one thing which satisfies the predicate. So all and any are duals, right? And uh, I have not defined a lot of things over here, like sub positions and uh, is losing. So I'm gonna do that now. And actually is losing should be just the dual of uh, is winning. So these are like mutually recursive definitions. Uh, so it is losing if there is some winner and that winner is not me. And this case is a draw. And if yeah, I'm, at, I'm at a losing position, if all the successors are winning positions for the other guy, because if there was at least one way for me to, uh, at least one way for me to not win, I would just take that particular move and make sure that the other guy doesn't win. So I am doomed only if everything is winning for the next guy. So these things are mutually recursive. Um, now I need to define this, which is the set of uh, successors in this game tree. So let's do that. Uh, so one useful function I'm going to define first is next player. And uh, no surprises here. Yeah, uh, I have still not defined successor position. And this is going to be position, arrow list of position. So, given a position with a particular board and a player, uh, I want to do something. So, first, So what I will do is I will look at the empty squares in the board. So those are the empty squares. And for each of these empty squares, by the way, this is shorthand for map. Uh, we all know that it is. Uh, maybe I should just write map because I make things complicated. So for each of those empty squares, the this particular the current player can go at those empty squares and that should give us something that should give us the next uh, position. So I'm going to define this thing called mark square in a moment. And that's going to give me a board, but I know that it's not going to be nothing because I'm making sure it's that square is empty. So I'm going to put a from just here. And then uh, I'm going to package that into the new position. So what will this new position function do given a new board it will basically uh, package that board by changing the current player to the next player right and what is this function called mark square going to do it basically is just puts the mark in the current board.
out so yeah i, I don't need to pass p to this function because it just give, returns me whoever has won the board it doesn't need to look at a particular pair so yeah what is okay so yes um now at this point we should carefully test this and then we can talk about how to improve this algorithm this took a lot of time so actually i have a bunch of different definitions of boards with i will just copy them over so i have export y board uh, export one export two board one i will add a few more because they are very useful for testing so i have a draw board so this draw is not draw in the sense of uh, is draw because i think it requires checking whether anyway let, let me load this into the this thing and then we can uh, okay so let's see so if i have draw board it's not exactly draw in the sense of is draw because it's like there are still some empty squares but if we explore the game tree we know that it's eventually going to be draw there is this board called r2 vertical x which is what the name sounds like so this position like if this is if the current player is x then this should be a winning position because he can just make one move and win but it's not like it's not a terminal node right now because he has not already won so he can make one move and win so we will test all that uh what okay then there is like a uh, yeah if o is the current guy over here then he should win so i will copy over all my tests from here and run them oh i didn't run this before that's not good so let, let's see what all tests we have so for example uh, these tests we saw before for line winner and board winner um there are more tests now actually let's see if they are passing so so okay, what is the issue okay so it is asking me so for some reason this equality also wants a this should be function also wants this to be a show i am not sure why that is but um i will not try to figure that out right now but i think we will definitely need equality over here because what is that work okay so uh, other than why it needs to i am not sure about that but let's see so i want to test the successor function so some simple tests one test is that the regardless of who the current player is the empty board should have nine successors because i could go in any one of those points the full board should have no successors that makes sense so the initial board is neither winning nor losing for anyone because op for optimal play it should be draw um if the current board is filled with all x's and the current player is x then uh he has won because it's a terminal node 
so this is very simple so here are some more complex cases so if you remember x board 1 let's see uh, so x board 1 uh, this is actually not so complex because it is a terminal case but uh, let's see x board 2 so here x will win in one turn because there is this fork and uh, actually X can go here or here and X will win. So that's good. And X also has, a, yeah. And actually if it is currently O, O will, it's a losing position for O because regardless of where O goes here or here, there will be one uh, extra position for X to do that. So it's losing if o, o goes now and winning if x goes now either way it's uh it's going to be winning for x at the end and there is this draw board which is not filled with things but it's going to be eventually draw regardless of who plays how so and uh we are indeed recognizing this as draw because like these tests say that regardless of who is playing it's a uh, neither a losing position or a winning position so yeah um so did you want to say something oh, sorry i thought you raised your hand so one thing over here is that uh, we make a lot of these recursive calls between these two things and we may want to cache these results if uh, the game tree is large for it, it seems that the game tree is not very large here besides like the tests are uh, finishing within a fraction of a second so maybe it's not that big of a deal but what we could do over here is we could uh, try to cache these results for uh, each of the positions and the other thing is uh, often there might be two strategies one is one gives you a win for in uh let's say two moves and another strategy which gives you a win in four moves so we want to win as fast as possible so i will try to uh i also want to be able to distinguish between these two things so i will instead of just marking them as losing and winning i want to give them a more complex score uh, but I don't think we have time for that. So maybe in the next class we can do that. And then I will show you how we can uh, add some UI to this. Yes. First, I want to step back and take a look at the picture. Yes. Class, but the perspective is that we first learn which is the basic approach to function very similar to what I Very much for us to solve all And then we first presented the relation factors in the end, and said, oh, you know, there's a key thing that they pull this back in terms of the function um, in places where it's built in the sequence factors, but it's free to pull that down to the source of the function. And as long as we don't look at some construction that actually would go wrong, it doesn't matter. They're not exploring to think about late trees, they can have errors in very simple. So See that there's a, a world that's, that's potentially broader than what we had. Then we 
them up and say, okay, well, the real world is typically don't have a nice functional language and direct defining for it or extreme language in the nature of your code. We use something like Java, we show, oh, well, the, as long as, as soon as you've got what are close to closures in Java, like find the little roots that you use to find the variable to hold the value that you have to pull out of the closures in Java. Like you can do everything in Java, that's a lot wordier, a lot crumpier, and you've got like this is a chicken type of thing, it's like a one or something versus what it looks like. Right. And finally, we go, it's kind of like if you can go to, Called Java Plus and Java Language. Then you could go to a world where very, very smart people who love the functional paradigm just saw crazy. Building a language to let them do functional programming everywhere. And um, still, in, I think the open, open issue is whether this has been proven to be efficient enough to cover any tasks. And the idea is, well, the cloud providers can do a bunch of things. And I would say already, Agnishan would argue for that one. But what's going on in the NASA is very much the same thing. Same thing. You switch it up more flexibility, and you have lots of notation and a big library. So you learn, it takes a lot of practice and so on to learn all of the strategies of that world. But you learn it and you can produce things that are incredibly sophisticated very, very quickly in comparison to the more Okay, that concludes the big picture. The other thing I was going to mention is that um, I, we are going to give you a sample final exam to study. I can't guarantee that it'll be ready until right at the beginning of finals. We'll put it up on, on Canvas. I'll we'll try to get it out sooner, we'll, but we'll see. My recollection is the final in this class is happening what? Saturday? Saturday in the morning, which I think it's kind of obscene to have finals on Saturday, but that's the way it goes. I mean, you live with the institution in which you're placed. Um, but anyway, Agnes and I had to put our heads together a little bit and, and join, join up that I, I have tons of stuff for the non, for the non Haskell part, but, but I'm sure uh, with some to, it's representative of what you're going to see in the Haskell portion. Of the okay. And, uh, I guess that pretty much, uh, concludes with that. Oh, internet's wonderful. I, while I was sitting there, I looked up the business of, of the mid tax strategy. It turns out John von Neumann, you may have heard of, actually proved the original theorem for finite game trees in 1928. Also, and it was viewed as the beginning of game theory. Also, Zermelo. I think Zermelo did like talk about this. Okay, okay. But, but was he really talking about gameplay? Okay, maybe. But this is just like Gauss doing fast Fourier transform in 1805, right? It, it gets rediscovered in 1965, you know, under defense contracting of the nuclear test ban treaty depends on the fact that we use the FMT in analyzing seismic signals so we can tell when the Russians are cheating. And I guess that we released enough of this of the Russians to do that we can do this, right? And of course, the fast Fourier transform now dominates a lot of engineering. I was talking to my brother-in-law who is he's both a pastor and a metallurgical engineer. And he was telling me about all of it, and also very good in civil engineering, how waves in Oil platforms that when you do when you do the Fourier transform, you get very very clear descriptions of what's going to happen when when these waves hit, hit the platform in terms of evaluating whether the joints are going to succeed. But then, at any rate, Shannon in 1949, before I was born, proposed the idea in chess of board evaluation, basically using a min-max strategy, but based on board evaluation. So it's it's not perfect, but basically he laid out the strategy that was. That was embodied in lots and lots of hacks in Deep Blue that, that make the world change.